It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. I've got something very, very special to show you today. It's a 43-year-old beer from an, a company that doesn't exist anymore, Ansel's Brewery. It's their Silver Jubilee Strong Ale. It's coming in at 9.68 fluid ounces. It was brewed to commemorate Queen Elizabeth, HM Queen Elizabeth II's Silver Jubilee. 1977 43 years old incredible we got a bit of a, a rusty cap going on on the on the side you're going to expect all of this for a beer that's seven 43 years old there you go there's the bottle cap oh it doesn't want to let me get out of the way There you go. So I was working in a, a, a lovely lady's house um, just last week and we got naturally, whenever I go to somebody's house work and I always end up talking about beer and because they always say, is this your day job? You, you, how's business and whatever? And I, and, I, and I talk about my little bit of carpentry I do and I, and I talk about the beer naturally. And as soon as I mentioned beer, she went, oh, I was an old lab technician for Ansel's Brewery. And then we got into the story and she said, I've got some really old bottles of beer that, that you're welcome to have when I thank you very much. Of course, um, I said I'd put it on YouTube. So hello, if you're watching. Um, her son is going to show her the, the ways on YouTube. Um, so what I'll do, I'll probably knock on her front door next week. Um, and, and say it's on YouTube and, and give it a watch. But anyway, let's get the beer out. It's bending, bending my opener. I've never known anything like it. Right, we're off. We had a little bit of carbonation as well. This is a little bit of, what happens is generally yeast over time goes a little bit black and I'm just looking here just to see if there's a bit of a bit of that going on yeah so she was a lab techni technician at Ansel's and apparently they spent loads of money on refurbing the place and then within a, a year or so of refurbing like they spent like a million pound on the place uh, they closed the, the allied breweries who owned the, the brewery back then decided to close it down <laughs> so an old ale, I'm going to get the yeast in, why not, if there is any. It's got carbonation, look, look. It's carbonated, 43 years old, carbonated beer. Lots of yeast sediment floating around in the glass. You can tell it's old. You can definitely tell it's an old liquid. Something about it. There's a little bit of like alcohol legs climbing the glass. There's a little bit of kind of the liquid sticking to the glass around here quite quite differently than new liquid would. Yeah, it's definitely bottle conditioned. Can you see that? Can I get you to have a look at that? I'm not sure what, what we're picking up here. Um, I was going to say something. Oh, yeah. So um, a strong ale. Uh, there's no ABV on this beer. So it can either be 7% up to 11%. That's the ABV category for, for the strong ale. And it can either be an old ale, a barley wine, or a burdened strong ale. That's the three categories an old ale comes under. It's a, a very dark coloured liquid, deep ma mahogany coloured, lots of yeast suspension in the glass. I'm going to get the aroma. Exciting times. Oh, it just, just, just smells amazing. 
lots and lots of licorice, lots of toffee, burnt toffee, raisin, plum, figs, prunes, all your lovely dark fruits. It's just, it's just had so much time to mature and, and do its thing. 43 years. Amazing. Amazing. I'm going to dive in. Cheers, everybody. drinkable it's drinkable what's fascinating is the fact that it's it's still carbonated you can see the carbonation carefully kind of moving through the glass but the reason why I'm looking is because I'm trying to show you that it's it's still carbonated I can feel the carbonation on the inside of the mouth there bonkers wonderful mouthfeel Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful mouthfeel. It's just sticks there to the inside of your mouth. I'm going to hazard a guess on the ABV. I'm going to hazard a guess. I reckon, I reckon it's about 10%. I'm going to say about 10% ABV. It, you just feel the alcohol, the warming of the alcohol on the inside of the throat, moving down to the pit of the stomach. And if I'm going to guess that, I'm digging through my, my, my catalogue of 5,500 beers I've reviewed here on YouTube. And I'm, and I'm just thinking back to the 10% the barley wines that I've reviewed and, and it's given me that kind of alcohol warming in the throat and the pit of the stomach. It's very normal for a... For us, for quite a large alcoholic beer to do that, to, to, to do it to me because I don't drink spirits. So whenever I have a strong beer, that's my kind of limit to to, to what I taught my body to to intake, if you like. So so imperial stouts, barley wines, imperial porters, strong ales, that sort of thing. So anything kind of like ten percent and over. 12% used to be the norm for Imperial Stouts. You start to feel that warmth, anything from 10%. So I'm going to say 10%. Speaking to a beer historian, who I know here in South Wales where we live, um, apparently Ansel's had a big stronghold in the Newport area of, of, of South Wales. There was a lot of Ansel's pubs in in the area. And it's amazing, isn't it? I mean, I, I, I'm, I wish I did a little bit of kind of Wikipedia work on this before I reviewed it, just to just to talk about Ansel's Brewery a little bit, where they came from, where they... But there was lots of, lots of breweries in the Burton area back in the day. This still is, it's still the brewing town of the of the of the UK is is Burton on Trent. Um, back when Ansel's, just to give you an example of how big Ansel's probably were, if you're of the younger generation today, um, Marston's. Think of Marston's um, or Banks. I think they've rebranded them all now. Marston's pubs. If you think of a Marston's pub. Whenever you go to a, quite a large town in the UK, you might see two Marston's pubs. I know we have one here in Barry. We have about three or four in Cardiff. They're kind of like big chain foodie type pubs. That's what Ansel's... I'm, I'm saying that. I say, Marston's is more of a, of a food-led company these days. It's more restaurants, more more fish and chips, pies and pasties, that's not pasties, but pies and sausage and mash and all day breakfast, that sort of thing, burgers. 
they, they, the, the breweries realised that there was a lot of money in food. But I reckon back in the day, Ansel's would have been one of the chain of pubs which probably served a little bit of food, but it was more it was more of a wet wet run brewery, so so more beer was sold. People I think people used to drink a lot more beer back in the day. The pubs used to be a lot more kind of busier than they are in the year 2020. So I'm just trying to think back really as to what what this brewery would have been. What what would have what would have, have, have been Ansel's kind of brewery and market and business because there was a lot of big breweries back in the day. Bass. Bass were huge back in the day. They don't exist anymore. Ansel's, big chain, don't exist anymore. Who was the other one? There was, there was a few. Whitbread. Whitbread, who own, who used to own Costa Coffee and Premier Inns. They were one of the largest breweries in the UK. I used to work for Bass years ago. I used to work in a pub that was, my paycheck used to say Bass before they were bought out. That was 1999. Blimey, the years seem to go by. Anyway, um, I think what happens when you, I suppose the danger, the danger really is that when a, when a business goes bankrupt, and you are not bankrupt, but if they get bought out and closed by, because they're still going, Molson Coors are still going, they probably got the rights to this brewery still. Probably still got the rights. But the danger is when a, when something disappears, that's the better word for it, when something disappears, there's always that kind of like, like I was born in 79, so I was probably around when Ansel's was still going, but at the very last, legs of it, so I wouldn't have remembered. So the danger is with Whitbread, with Ansel's, with Bass, is that you start to kind of glorify it. You start to, to build it up into something that it probably probably wasn't. It's like fairy tale stuff, isn't it? You think, you think I've had this really old beer, um, they must have been a magnificent brewery, but, but the, the truth is, and this is the truth. If you go to say to a Green King pub, or, or one of the, the 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 regional breweries we call them these days, if you go there, you eat, you may have some fish and chips, you may have a pint or two, and you leave. And if they disappeared from the street, if if the business disappeared, how many people would remember in ten years' time who who say Green King were? Um, and and that's the that's the truth of it all. That's the what I'm trying to say is is that is that they're a company that survives through profit. They're a fish and chips kind of pint, and then you leave, and then you forget about the place. You don't you don't you don't like glorify it, do you? You don't like go oh green, what a wonderful thing Green King is. You you just. That only happens, I'm getting to the end of my story now, that only happens when a, when a business disappears, you remember that business just by seeing an old pub sign somewhere, because there's an old pub sign in Cardiff, in the centre of Cardiff, they still have Ans it still has an Ansel sign on it, um, by the Cardiff International Arena. And then you start to think, oh, what, I wonder what that place was like. And, 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 and then you, I suppose what I'm saying is you overthink it. You, you massively overthink what that company probably was. Beautiful beer. It's a real privilege to, to have the opportunity to upload this video to YouTube because it's, this, this will go down as, it's archiving, really, isn't it? It's it's video evidence of of something that isn't around anymore. A forty three year old liquid that's still very very drinkable. It's it's a lovely beer. Raisin plum, fig, prune, great mouthfeel. You still get some of the malt character, which is just astounding. You get, I mean, the hop character would have dropped out a million years ago, but. Yeah, so there's no real bitterness, but but treacle, licorice, 
maybe the sugars that they added to this beer back in the day are still coming through. Let's rate it. Oh, what you've got to, got to remember as well, very quickly before I rate it, is that this, this sort of thing is quite rare because people used to drink in the pubs years ago. The idea of going into a supermarket and buying yourself a, a, a pack of bottles of, of, of ale was, was your, your four for six bottles in Tesco, say, these days, where you took the bottles home and you drink them, they didn't, didn't really, it, it wasn't, well, even when I was young, I think the first bottled beer I seen in Tesco that I thought, that looks really interesting, was Hobgoblin. And that was just every now and again you'd see a hobgoblin in the in the shop. People used to drink in the pubs, so there was no real physical getting hold of 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 these bottles experience. And, and that that's something else which I wanted to mention. So this day and age, when you go to the supermarket, you see a, a whole aisle full of bottles of ale that that wasn't a thing in 1977 that's the reason why when these breweries go to the wall if you like a lot of it disappears very quickly so to get a bottle and review it on there's their badge there so it was a it was a squirrel this is so, so i want to document as much as i can before we stop the review finish things up I've got to get a better camera. I really have. Come on. Get out. I've, I got it. It picks up your face. It wants to pick up your face more than objects. There we go. This is some kind of squirrel was the ansel. Um, okay, so that, that's it really. Um, I've showed you everything. It's probably in this 9.68 fluid ounces, which, the, which was the old measure, is probably these days, uh, that looks to me like a, let's grab this dog's window. Yeah, it's taller, it's like narrower. Mm, that's a 330 milliliter bottle. So this is a, I'm going to say that's a 255. I'm going to say that's probably a 255 milliliter. Um, I'd like to know what 9.68 fluid ounces trans goes over to milliliters. If you could comment in the comments box, that would be great. Rating for the beer. Rating the oldest beer. I think I've, uh, I know I had a Thomas Hardy's ale, which is three years older. 1974 was Thomas Hardy's. But yeah, that was that was three years older. So yeah, still a still a massive massive achievement to be able to find these old beers. Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten from Real Ale Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.